Welcome to English Better Now. This is for everyone who wants to be better at English. What do I get with this class? I practice words, check where I am today, and improve my English. As an intro, English words like wings give flight to my life goals. I improve my English sounds and sentences with all four stories. Also included are spices of odd English, issues, idioms, and more. Get the printed guidebook too. I improve my English with these 10 stories and bonuses. Let's get started now. I improve my English with stories. In this story, Robin tries to fly. I try out my English. Welcome to Robin Tries Video Book. Wings of Courage. Hi, my name is Robin. I live on a tree in a nest. I cannot fly. I want to. I am afraid. I fear that I will fail. Should I even try to fly? My friends show me how they fly. It is important to flap to fly. Also, need to learn how to land. I decide, yes, I should try to fly. I study how to fly. With my family and friends. Next, I practice short glides. I think about flying. I am ready to try. Jump from the nest, I flop and flop so fast. Suddenly, I can fly! Hooray! Oh me, oh my, I can fly! I can fly all across the sky! The world looks different from up here. fly to places that I could not go to before I learned to fly. I feel different too now that I can fly. I believe in myself more. This bird gets blown to another country. Bird learns that new words have the same meaning. I learn new English words. Welcome to New Words Same Meaning Video Book. Green Bird Flies in the Clear Blue Sky. Bird sees her home country. Suddenly, a big storm blows Bird far, far away. Bird is not hurt. She sees that everything looks different. Bird flies down to ask directions. Bird asks a cow. Moo, moo, moo. That means, which way is my home? Ma, ma, ma. Said the new country cow. Bird said, I can understand you. Cows here don't speak the same words as cows where I come from. Next, Bird sees a yellow duck. Quack, quack, quack. Said Bird to the new duck. 
Dap, 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 said the happy but confused duck. Bird said, I can't understand you. This is not how ducks in my country talk. Bird sees a smiling frog. Bird flies fast to meet the new frog. Croak, 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 said the bird to the new frog. Oh, 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 said the friendly but confused frog. Bird asks, Why do the new animals use different words than where I come from? Bird learns that other countries use different words, which have the same meaning. The animals work together to learn each other's words. Bird learns to talk with her new friends. The new animals teach Bird the way to fly home. Bird flies home. She thinks about what she learned. Different languages teach us new ways to understand more about others and ourselves. May we learn each other's words, see where we are the same, understand our differences. How can a turtle jump? How can I improve my English? This is the story of Turtle Jumps. Hi, my name is TJ. I am a turtle. Sometimes I am happy, sometimes sad. Mom and Dad say I should be glad that I am a turtle. At school, I am often last. At recess, I am the last one picked to play. In gym, everyone gets to jump. I try, but I can't. I ask Dad, why can't I jump? Dad said, well, turtles can't jump. Mom said, but you do have many talents. Go find them. I think and think about jumping. I get a good idea. My friends and I build TJ1, Turtle Jumper 1. We try it. Sadly, it fails. We redo it. We make the STJ2, the Super Turtle Jumper 2. We try again. It works! I am the first turtle to ever jump. I think I will be the first turtle to jump in outer space. First, I have to finish my homework. Next, we learn English numbers and how to count on this video. Welcome to numbers, not to nine. Why do I need numbers? Numbers tell us how many, how much. Also, numbers count. One, I have one head with one nose and one mouth. Our number one is a line drawn from
from the top to down. Here are more ones. There is one sun and one moon too. The Chinese number one is drawn side to side. Two. I have two eyes. I have two arms and hands. And two legs and two feet. Here are more twos. Animals have two eyes. Bicycles or bikes have two tires. Bi means two. Three. My fingers have three parts. Triangles have three sides. This sign is a triangle. Traffic lights have three colors. Here are more threes. Triceratops had three horns. A tricycle has three wheels. Tri means three. Four. Squares have four equal sides. Rectangles have four sides. But two are longer. Here are more fours. Many animals have four legs. Four quarters make a dollar. There are four seasons. Cars and quad cycles have four tires. Quad means four. Five. I have five fingers on one hand. I have five toes on one foot. Here are more fives. This starfish has five legs. This star has five points. Pentagons have five sides. Penta means five. Six. These insects each have six legs. Here are more sixes. These building blocks and dice each have six faces. This pencil has six sides. These snowflakes have six main branches. These natural rocks have six sides. These make hexagon-shaped honeycombs with six sides. Hexa means six. Seven. There are seven colors in this rainbow. These UK coins each have seven sides. Here are more sevens. There are seven days in a week. In the West, seven is a lucky number, especially in Las Vegas. Eight. These flowers each have eight petals. An octopus has eight arms. Spiders have eight legs. A stop sign has eight sides. It is an octagon. Octa means eight. Interesting. October is our tenth month. But it is named after the Roman 8th month. In China, 8 is a lucky number. The Chinese Olympics started at 8 p.m. on the 8th day of the 8th month of 2008. 9. Here are 9 balls. Baseball often has 9 innings. 999 is used to call emergency in England. K9 means police dog. Now we have learned our numbers, counting 1 to 9. But this is not enough. A number for nothing is needed. This is 0. 0 alone means none. Zip, nada, zilch. In England, they call 0 a knot. Let's count fingers. The number 10 is made of the number 1 followed by a 0. Add a 0 to make the number 1 into 10 and 2 into 20. Let's count by 10s. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. Next, two zeros turn 1 into 100. Let's count by 100s. 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, 600, 700, 800, 900. Now for a surprise. This is the number 1000. To close, I need numbers to count, pay bills, tell times and dates, and make phone calls. Who would 
even thought that nine numbers and a knot can really do a lot. Learning more words helps me be better at English. Also, understanding where English origins help me with spelling. Welcome to English, Issues and Origins. English is a worldwide language that comes from England. Over years, different people come to England. They change English. Here are five impacts on English. 1. Celts Long ago, Celts moved from Europe to England. Celts have chariots but can't write. A few English words come from the Celts, like dad, Ben and Bob. 2. Romans Next, Romans come to England from Italy. Romans bring their alphabet letters. Many English tech words come from the Romans, like science, computers, and cameras. Romans give us the keywords, words like quiet, question, and queen. Some Roman English words have a silent E, like plumber. Here are some more examples, climb, comb, and thumb. Some days are Roman English, like moon day called Monday, Saturn's day called Saturday, and Sunday. 3. A. Germans Next, German tribes attack England. They add their words to English, like the R sounds in words read, run, and write. They also give English the TH blow sound, like three, thank, and thumb. In English, TH also makes a buzz sound, like they, there, and this. Numbers are German English. Notice the spelling of 1, 2, and 8. They give English words with silent H, like why, where, and when. These words too. The word England means land of the Engels, one of the German tribes. Here are more German English words, work, word, and world. 3b. Vikings. Next, more German tribes called Vikings come to England in longboats. First, they attack. Then many Vikings move to England. Words give and take come from them. But at first, Vikings just take. Viking English words have silent K, like knife, knot, and knee. So do SK words, like sky, skin, and skull. Vikings name Thursday and Friday. Vikings give us these G words, like egg, leg, and bug. In the past, Vikings were in Northern England. In the South, a king called Alfred the Great makes many English books. This is very important because the next army to attack England does not speak English. 4. French Next, French Normans attack England. For hundreds of years, England's rich king and friends only speak French. Everyone else on the island speaks English. Over time, French and English words blend together. Often, French English has many words for the same thing. Here are examples. Gift, present. Belly, stomach. Words, vocabulary. Many French English words are about food. Examples are restaurant, cereal, soup, sugar, and sauce. Also, the letter G makes a G or a J sound, like the G in garden, garbage, and garage. Notice the French Z sound too. The letter G also makes a J sound, like giant, giraffe, and germs. More French English words are castle, dance, and study. 5. Today English is a mix of different sounds and spellings. Example are the words cook, 
good and food, the oohs have three different sounds. Also, English has ng words like bring, king, and ring. English is a rich language, like colors for artists. English words are expressive and creative. English also adds new words to adapt to world changes, like robot, internet, and selfies. Wow! Aha! And hey are high energy words. It is exciting to learn English. To close, when we see its origins, we better understand English sounds and spellings. May this video help us to overcome English issues. Aha! English is awesome! Check out this bonus video, Read English, to see the basic rules on English words and sentences. I start with this English book. Books have words. Words have meaning. Words have letters. Letters make sounds. I read letters. A in ape. B in B. S in C. A, E, I, O, U are special letters called vowels. Often, vowels say their names. A in ape, E in eat, I in kite, O in go, U in blue. I read more say name vowels. A, ape, cape. E, B, sneeze, achoo! I, kite, bite, arr! O, bone, phone, U, cute, fruit. Often, vowels make other sounds. A, in act, E, in pet, I, in in, O, in on, U, in up. I say more vowel sounds. A, glad, dad. A, egg, leg. I, pig, wig. A, frog, log. A, fun, sun. Next, I learn a secret. Letters make words. Words make a sentence. Here are example sentences. My name is Robin. I live on a tree. I want to fly. Next, rules help me read out loud. Rules are common ways to say letters and words. Here are 10 English rules. Rule number one. Many letters make only one sound. Each rule has breakers. That is, English does not always follow the rules. Breaker number one. C makes the K sound, like car and cake. C also makes the S sound, like city, CD, and center. Rule number two. Some vowels say their names. When a word ends in silent E, the vowel says its name, like rule, make, name, five, hope, and blue. Rule breaker words are come, have, won. Rule number three. Often, vowels make other sounds. A, at. E, pet. E, in. A, on. A, up. A is the most common English sound. Rule number four. Sometimes, letter U makes the A uh sound as in up, us, and under. Breaker number four. All vowels can make the A uh sound. Was the animal one? It just takes practice. Rule number five. Letters blend to make new sounds. Blah, blue, cha, chu, sha, shu. Rule number six. Sentences, names, and places start with big letters. 
names are nouns. I learned that a noun is a person, place, or a thing. Notice the words clouds and flowers. Rule number seven, I add an S to make more than one noun, like apple and apples. Breaker number seven, I add ES to words that end in S, SH, SH, CH, CH, and X, like bus and buses and box and boxes. Next, action. I learn about action words called verbs, like look, fly, and learn. Rule number eight is about S verbs. Newsflash, with a single noun, add S to the verb, like a frog asks or frogs ask. Breaker number eight, the words you or I are single, but the verb has no S. Examples are, I ask, you look, and I fly. What time is it? Rule number nine, I learn about time in English. Action words change with time. Add ed to make past verbs like in the past, I laughed. Today, I laugh. In the future, I will laugh. Breaker number nine. Sometimes, different words are used to show time like yesterday, I ate. Today, I eat. Tomorrow, I will eat. English verbs take practice. Rule number 10. Sentences often have an SVO order. 1. Subject. 2. Verb. And 3. Object. Like frog is the subject, said is the verb, and oak is the object. Breaker number 10. Some sentences are not in SVO order. Like oak, o, object, said, verb, and the friendly frog is the subject. To close, I now know that letters make sounds. That blends into words. Words make sentences that are building blocks for me to learn English. I continue to improve my English with stories. Fire burns animals' homes in the forest. I learn the English of teamwork. The sunny green jungle is full of light. Suddenly, lightning flashes. The tree crashes and a fire starts. The fire quickly grows. A parrot sees the fire and yells, Fire! Fire! A scared bunny yells, What should we do? We should flee, said the vulture as it flies away. Some of us cannot run away from the fire said the snake. I agree, said Mama Bird on her nest. We should work together to put out the fire, said the wise tiger. The monkeys make baskets. Hippos fill the baskets with water. Water buffaloes pull the baskets closer to the fire. Elephants use their noses as hose to put out the fire. Oops! An elephant farts! The wind blows too. The fire gets bigger. We need more water, said the clever tiger. Together, they discuss a new plan. The beavers chop down bamboo. They poke holes in the center. The animals work as a team. They join the pipes together. Soon, water flows from the waterfall through the bamboo to the fire. Monkeys on the elephants aim the bamboo hoses at the fire. It takes a long time to fight the fire. Birds bring water to the thirsty firefighters. Finally, the fire is out. Hooray! shout the jungle animals. Our home is safe now. Together we fix the jungle fire. It takes our hard work to have harmony. Monkey learns that playing guitars takes practice. 
I learn English takes practice too. Mo walks on the stage. He slowly grabs the guitar. Mo tries to play. Like a rock star, he strums the strings. That sounds awful! Said the crowd. Can you really play the guitar? I don't know. Said Mo. I have not played before. The crowd yells, Boo! Mo feels discouraged. He walks off the stage. Teacher Tay talks with Mo. First, you must practice. Then, you will be able to play. Huh? I don't understand. Teacher asks, Do you really want to learn how to play the guitar? When? Yes, fill out this form. Be ready to study. Mo thinks about it. He decides he wants to learn to play. He and his parents sign the permission form. They go to the beach. Mo asks, What do waves have to do with learning to play the guitar? You will see, says Teacher Tay. They go into the wavy water. Tay holds Mo down under the water. Finally, Tay pulls Mo to the surface. Mo gasps for air. Teacher Tay tells Mo, When you want to learn as much as you wanted air, please call me. Practicing a new skill takes hard work. Are you really ready? Mo thinks about the lesson for a few days. He decides. Mo calls Tay. I am ready to work hard. Teacher begins the lessons. Start by learning the language of music, the lingo. The words of music are notes. Notes tell you how to hold your hands. You then pluck the pick to make different sounds. Teacher Tay replies. At first, practice playing songs that others write. Next is months and months of more practice. Mo practices and practices. Next, Tay helps Mo write his own music too. Today is showtime! Mo confidently goes on the stage. Mo grabs his guitar. Mo plays. The crowd claps loudly. They cheer. Wonderful! Excellent! Hooray! Mo smiles and thinks about what he has learned. It really takes hard work to play well. With this story, English does not seem so odd when I learn where these 10 words come from. Welcome to Odd English with 10 Words! When I learn where English words come from, I better understand how to use the words. 1. Big Wig means an important or famous person. In the past, it is fashion for the rich to wear wigs to hide their greasy hair. The more famous the person, the bigger the wig they wear. This is the past king of France. He would wear a very big wig. Today, big wigs walk down red carpets. 2. Chairman means the boss or the person in charge. In the past, only the king has a chair or throne. Everyone else sits on bare benches or stools. The powerful king is called the chairman. Today, we say the chairperson leads the meeting. 3. Counter means a tabletop where people do business. In the past, business people use counting boards to add up customer bills. The narrow tabletop where people do the counting is called a counter. Today, we still pay bills at the counter. 
Also, a counter is a narrow tabletop where we make food. 4. Beef means cow meat. In the past, England is ruled by powerful king or queen and lords. They are rich. Rest of the country is poor. The people eat mostly bread and veg. Only the rich can afford to eat beef or pork. Today, we eat roast beef dinners. 5. Fire means to lose a job. Years ago, miners worked in mines. Each miner lives in a small shack near the mine. A miner who breaks the rules like unsafe or stealing is punished. His shack is burned down. Once the fire is over, he cannot work there anymore. He has been fired from the job. Today, we say he is always late, so the boss fired him. 6. Threshold means a door or floorboard. In England, in the past, most people lived in small houses with dirt floors. In the winter, animals lived inside. With you, wheat stems called thresh are spread over the dirt floor. At the door is a piece of wood to keep or hold the thresh inside. Today, we still say, don't slip on the threshold. The word threshold also means the start of something new. Like, we are on the threshold of robots replacing many human workers. 7. Underdog means people who will want to win something but probably will not win. Long ago, big logs are hand-sawed by two people to make boards. One person is above and one is below. The person below gets all the sawdust. He is called the underdog. The word may come from a group of dogs where the top dog bullies the weaker dogs. Today, we still say he yells for his team, but they are the underdogs. 8. Uppercase means capital letters. Long ago, printing presses used separate letters to make words which are printed on paper. Two cases hold the loose letters. Capital letters are kept in the uppercase. The lowercase holds letters called, can you guess? Lowercase letters. Today, we still say, uppercase letters start a sentence. 9. Windfall means sudden good luck. In the past, wood fires cook food and heat homes. Then, this is a problem for the poor because the rich own most of the trees. The law let poor people pick up branches which the wind made fall off of the trees. Today, we still say winning the lottery is a windfall. 10. Window means an opening covered by glass. In the past, glass is expensive. Most people cannot afford glass. Many people live in small houses that use open, smoky wood fire to cook and heat. People cut small wind holes in their homes to let air and light in and smoke out. Over time, the words wind hole become the word window. Today, our buildings have lots of glass-covered windows. Windows keep wind out and let sun in. To close, English can be odd. Now I know why. Capitals are called uppercase letters. The boss is a chairperson. Big, big means an important person. With this book, I learn where 10 common words come from. I am on the threshold of understanding English. Now, that is a windfall. This is a story of how a fish and a bird became friends. I learned that English is friendly too. My name is Fishy. I swim in the sea. I live in a reef. I am the birdie. I fly in the sky above the reef. I live in a nest on the tree. I fly. I swim. 
Where is the sand? I see a fish below. I wave my wing. I see a bird above. I wave my fin. Fishy and birdie ask each other. Do you want, Do you to, want to be friends? <laughs> Whoever heard of anything so silly? What? A fish and a bird? Friends? Hmm. Hmm. A heckler says, Where are you playing? In the sea or sky? Can a fish fly and a bird swim? Fishy asks, Do you want to come home for dinner? I would like to. But first, I will have to ask. Birdie's mom answers, Sure, you can go. But take this with you. Birdie asks, How can I do this? Fishy replies, Take a big breath. Just try to fly underwater and you will swim. Yummy! Replies Birdie. Birdie said, This food is different from what I eat at home, but it tastes good. Can you come to my house tomorrow? Fishy answers, I would like to, but first I have to ask. Fishy's parents say, Sure, if we can find a way, they work together. Dinner is different, but very delicious, said Fishy. Birdie asks, What is it like to be a fish? What? <laughs> it is great fun. You get to play in shipwrecks, said Fishy. Birdie replies, Wow, I could like that. What is it like to be a bird? Asks Fishy. Try, except when it rains or I go swimming. Flying to mountain tops is great fun. The view is amazing. Answers Birdie. Wow, I would like that too, said Fishy. Together, they swim in the shipwreck. They also fly to a mountain top. One day, Fishy sees a hunter aim at Birdie. Fishy splashes water at the hunter. Thanks! Later, Birdie sees a fisherman's net catch fishing. Birdie dives into the water and makes a hole in the net. Thanks! They talk about their adventures. With a smile, Fishy swims fast and jumps out of the water. Fishy flaps, spins, and vertically glides. Fishy then glides back into the water. Well done, my friend. Now watch this. Birdie takes a big breath and flaps the wings. Birdie briefly swims like a fish around the shipwreck. Next, Birdie spurts to the sky. Well done! The fish can fly and the bird can swim because we are friends. An idiom is a few words with lots of meaning. Understanding idioms helps me speak better English. Welcome to English with 10 idioms. What are idioms? Why do we use them? 1. Computer bugs mean computer problems. In the past, a computer is as big as a room. One day, Grace Hopper's computer crashed. She looks for the cause. She finds a moth that caused the problem. From then on, she calls a computer problem a bug. Today, we still call computer problems bugs. 2. Heard it through the grapevine means to learn something from gossip. Before telephones, telegraphs send messages. 
telegraph wires look like grapevines. People use idioms where few words have lots of meaning. An example is, I just heard through the grapevine that she likes him. Today, we still say gossip comes from grapevines. 3. Loose cannon means an out-of-control person. In the past, wooden warships have metal cannons. Strong ropes keep the cannons in place. A loose cannon would push back quickly out of control. Today, we say this phrase to mean people who can't control themselves. For example, these fighting athletes are loose cannons. 4. Potholes mean holes in the road. Long ago, cartwheels get stuck in muddy roads. Near factories, people put pottery pieces onto the road. Years later, the roads are paved. When holes were in the top tarmac, you can see pottery bits. Today, we call road holes potholes. 5. Put a sock in it means to stop talking so loud or too much. Before music apps, records are played on these machines. Music comes out the horn-shaped speaker. There is no way to lower the volume. The sound is made softer by putting a sock in the speaker. Today, we say, that is too noisy, put a sock in it. 6. Quack means a bad or dodgy doctor. Long ago, people did not know what causes diseases. Doctors think bad air causes diseases like the plague. They wear outfits like this to protect themselves. The beak is full of things that smell nice. These doctors don't cure the plague. The dodgy doctors look like ducks, so people call them quacks. 7. Saved by the bell means to save at the last minute. Long ago, people are afraid of being buried alive. So, Rich people are buried with a cord tied to their shoes inside the coffin. The other end connects to a bell at the surface. If alive, he moves his foot and rings the bell. He is saved by ringing the bell. Today, we still say this to mean rescued at the last moment. 8. Throw the baby out with the bath water means to not appreciate something important. Long ago, people don't bathe often. In the castle, servants pour hot water into the wooden bath. The king washes first, then the queen and older kids. When it's time for the baby's bath, the water is brown. The servants have to take care not to throw the baby out with the water. Today, we say this phrase to mean lose the good getting rid of the bath. Like, throwing aluminum cans into the trash is like throwing the baby out with the bath water. 9. Tip means a reward for good service. Before electricity, rich people handwrite notes that messengers deliver. When the message is urgent, the sender pays extra money. On the note, they write tip. It means to ensure promptitude or quick delivery. Today, we still say tip to mean money given for good service. 10. Wave a red flag means to warn about danger. Over a hundred years ago, horses pull carts. When cars are invented, some cities have red flag laws. A person waving a red flag walks in front of the slow car to warn the horses. Today, we say this phrase to warn about danger. For example, scientists wave a red flag about climate change. To close, an idiom is a few words with lots of meaning. With idioms, bugs break computers. Socks mean quiet, and grapevines talk. 
Understanding idioms improves my English. Check out this bonus video to see the story of objects before they became smartphone apps. Welcome to Smartphones! Seven objects before their apps. May smartphones lead to smarter people. At first, cameras use film. Next, inside digital cameras, light shines on a sensor to capture pictures. Today, photo apps use tiny sensors to take digital pictures too. We've gone from separate cameras to selfies. At first, maps are printed on paper. New places need new maps for us to find directions. Next, global satellites, GPS, send location and time signals to separate receivers. Today, map apps use GPS, tiny sensors and software for us to find directions. We've gone from paper maps to easily finding new places. At first, groovy records make music. Later, records are replaced by CDs. In a CD player, light becomes on or off patterns. That turns into sounds in the speakers. Today, music apps use songs stored as digital memory to make new music. We've gone from separate records and CDs to playing and recording smartphone sounds. At first, movie cameras use film. Next, video cameras use tape. Then, digital video cameras use sensors and memory to record video. Video cameras take over 20 still pictures a second. Today, video apps use the camera for pictures and microphone for sound. Software keeps pictures and sounds in sync. We've gone from separate movie cameras to smartphones that records and plays video. We also play video games with more sensors and action-filled software. At first, letters are written by hand. Next, typewriters type letters. We pay to mail letters by post. It takes days or weeks for letters to be delivered. Today, email apps use touchscreen and software to write texts and emails. We've gone from slow letters to instant emails delivered worldwide. At first, library books are used to search for subjects. Can you imagine drive to the library, search card decks to find books? To search for data, lots of work for little information. Today, search apps quickly connect to the global internet that seems endless. We search the world's knowledge at our fingertips. We've gone from separate books to worldwide web searches. Wow! Just one more. At first, telephones are landlocked in one place. Next, cell phones make calls on the moon. Cell phones use radio waves to connect global tower networks and telephone lines. Today, phone apps change sounds into radio waves to make worldwide phone calls. Wi-Fi and Bluetooth use radio waves too. We've gone from separate phones to connected smartphones. Now to the end. Hello! Yes, it once took all of these to do what my smartphone can do today. I take pictures, find directions, listen to music, take and play videos, send emails, search the internet, and of course, make phone calls, all with my handheld smartphone. Okay then, thanks for the call. Bye-bye! Well done! You have completed the class 
English better now. You practiced English words, checked what you know, and improved your English sounds and sentences with all four stories. Now, keep on learning and using English. Free Alford ebooks and videos will help. Alford books come in three levels easy, middle, and advanced. Next, use English every day.